And next, to look at the commodity market, crude oil prices fell like 2% yesterday, and the prices were being pressured by a global commodity sell-off. Do you think this time mostly by the profit taking after five, three weeks gains or something else that we have some crude oil here? I think the inventory levels were quite high. We saw recent uh, builds in inventories based on the API data and the data actually for the DOE that we saw recently, and so that's a concern. Uh, WTI crude had gotten up to former levels right near $58. That's an important technical level up near where it hit back in January of this year. So we reversed. Um, it's tough to make too much of the pullback. I think if you pull back a few dollars to 55 there should be support and, and really any minor pullback would still be viable. Uh, I'm worried if we see a larger break. We are heading into seasonally a very bearish time for crude oil. Yeah. So historically you start to see builds around this time of year and the demand for heating oil and getting gasoline for, for heat obviously increases yeah. and that could cause uh, a traction and then a pullback in, in energy in general. Yeah, and we are holding like above 55 right now. Are yeah. you looking for 60 for WTI as target or grand for 70 by the year end? I don't think we'll get to 70 by year end. I think 58 is a big, big level. And if we get above that, then we're likely going to move into the low 60s. 58 for WTI? For WTI. For WTI. Brent, Brent WTI. crude has actually already surpassed its prior peak and actually is in better shape technically. So uh, the U.S. crude market has had understandable pressure uh, getting the rigs back online, I think, and, and just uh, the hurricanes had caused some, some real issues, I think, with production. And so that's gradually being put back online. But uh, Brent crude is much stronger technically than WTI right now. And the next for the good market, good prices edged up a little bit uh, yesterday from week low mm -hmm. after the dollar uh, dips. So we like to know that because the good prices have been uh, in a very narrow range for a mm -hmm. while. So what can you, you, you will consider as the most important factors that will lead and to hit this uh, market to move? So to answer your question, the two things that I look at that I think are the most important for gold are really the U.S. dollar and the price of, uh, of treasury yields and treasuries. If you start to see yields and the dollar both move up, those tend to be very bearish for precious metals and we almost always see a big decline. If they tend to be split where the dollar is rallying but yet yields are falling, gold can be mixed and choppy and that's precisely what we've seen uh, in recent months. So. Uh, my thinking is we're still in sort of a wait and see mode. There is no definitive trend. The trend has been down since 2011. It's not really broken out yet, to my knowledge, uh, based on the charts I look at. So it's still tough to be real bullish on gold. I think we're going to need to see a more meaningful decline in the U.S. dollar uh, and really see rates stay where they are. And any uptick in rates is going to be a big negative, I think, for gold. So a lot of it depends on growth. And if growth starts to become more apparent, then I think that's going to be a negative for, for gold.